Good morning, everybody. Um, I hope you guys had a great Easter. Um, today I'm back at work, and you may be too. So happy Monday. I wanted to come and make a video because I have had people reach out to me through email um, just on basically getting started with the beauty supply when you don't know where to start at all. I want to thank the people who have purchase my vendors list um, I appreciate you you guys know who you are um, so first we want to start with some of you may already have a location some of you may not so you might want to start looking for a location it can be in your neighborhood um, depending on where your money is at and what you can afford um, you might want to look maybe in a low income area um, just getting started don't think that that's where you would have to stick but um, definitely in a neighborhood where you know that people can get to you people will need what you have to offer um, or that they will travel to you so if your money is just not if your budget is just not big there's no nothing wrong with starting in um, a more low income area where you might find a shopping center with affordable rent. Um, and then there's nothing wrong with, as long as you can afford it, getting into a more established um, shopping center where you might find a Dollar General or traffic already there um, to help bring traffic to your door. So you definitely would want to start looking for a building that's if you planned on working from a brick and mortar don't be afraid that once you give down your first month's rent don't be uh, afraid to ask for a month free maybe even two just to go ahead and get your store set up because during the time that you're setting up you're really not making a profit um, it's probably going to cost you more than likely just to get in what you need to set up your store the way that you need it to be ran. The worst that a person can tell you is no. Um, but don't think that the answer will automatically be no. Just try it. Um, some of you are not wanting to do a brick and mortar. So I can still give you the details on going about um, getting set up for a website or in-home sales or such and so I will go into detail more about that um, one of the first steps that you want to do is once you've got your building you will want to go to the comptroller of your state I'm in Texas so mine would be the Texas comptroller so that's who I will go through um, in Texas, it doesn't cost anything to get a permit to run um, for wholesale, to go to wholesalers, to be able to purchase wholesale. So you'll get your, um, your tax permit. Um, so basically, you will go in and fill out a sheet of paper, and then uh, you would need your ID. And I think that's all that you would need. You're going to need the address for your location. And you're going to fill out everything and they're going to get it in the system that day. And then in about between a week or two, you will receive your actual permit in the mail. Usually when you when you go to the comptroller, they're going to want you to open within 90 days of uh, filling out that permit paper. So you have 90 days. Because within 90 days, you're going to have to start filing taxes. Um, and that's just off of your purchases. Now let's say you were to open but you didn't make nothing you would just still claim zero but at some point in in time you're going to have to start um paying taxes which are usually quarterly through the texas comptroller so that's going to be the first step after finding your location um you would go and get that permit because you're going to need that permit so that you can go to wholesalers and a true wholesaler is not going to let you through the door um, without that permit. 
Um, that goes the same uh, for, I'm not for sure. I've, I've never ran a website, you know, so, but if you're wanting to get wholesale, you're still going to have to get that permit. And it may be a little different for you guys to, um, to do it from a website and from home, but for the most part, some things are going to be the same. So one, you're going to want, want to find your location, go ahead and establish that building, um, the lease and what, what have you with that. Step two, you're going to want to go to the comptroller of your state and fill out uh, a resale permit that allows you to buy wholesale and resale to be able to claim tax and everything. Step three, you would want to, you can apply for an EIN number. You can apply for the EIN number even before you go to the comptroller. And you would just um, get online and Google the EIN. It takes you all of five or 10 minutes to do the EIN number. That's your federal ID number that allows for you to have employees, what have you. Um, even though I don't have any employee, any employees, um, it still benefits me for my EIN to have some of the vendors because they do ask for that EIN number which is the same thing as almost like a social security number. But when you have an EIN number, it lets you do business with your business instead of using your personal social security number. So that starts um, also starts letting you um, build business credit and what have you through that EIN number. Um, so brick and mortar, Texas. Well, I'm sorry, comptroller. I'm in Texas, guys. Um, EIN number then you're going to want to go to the SBA of your state and you will go in there and file to establish your business and here it costs about six dollars and something cents um, it's kind of like a notary and you'll go to them and you'll fill out just what your your business name address just it doesn't take that long and then they're going to give you a paper and you're going to take that paper to the Secretary of State. You go to the Secretary of State, and here it costs about $26 and some cents, so we'll round that off to $27. Um, and that's registering your business. So you will get a paper within at least about a week from the Secretary of State, and that's going to be the assumed name. So it'll be... John Doe doing business as low and key locksmith, um, just to give an example. Um, so it would be your assumed name through them. And basically, those are the steps. Most people, when you're getting started, especially in the beauty supply industry, you're kind of going to want to have some vendors lined up. You don't want to get a building, um, go to the Texas Comptroller, get an EIN, have a building where you're going to have to start paying rent within 30 to 60 days. And you really don't have any vendors because now you've got this building and you're trying to find vendors and who knows how long it's going to take and you're going to be having to pay rent soon. So you want to come in with some some type of knowledge, um, which is why I sell my vendor list for $50. I have 15 or 16 vendors on there. So I don't want to give everything for free. I don't want to do all of the footwork for you. Um, I will help in any way that I can. Um, I definitely could charge more for my vendor list, but I don't. I charge $50. Um, whereas somebody else who would have these same vendors would definitely charge you more. Um, I'm sure some of you may be hesitant, but I am what I say I am. Um, I, I'm not here to play any games. I'm not here to get you for your money and leave you hanging. That's not me. 
Um, I had a lady, Julia, you know who you are. She has reached out through email. She has called me. We spoke on the phone a few times um, with her worries and questions and things like that. And wherever I can help, I will help. Um, we can all grow together um, because the position you're in, trust me, I've been there. And um, like I say, I will help if I can. So I've given my email in my last video that has the vendor list and it's also in the description box. So just touch the arrow down and that would be body soul hair supply at gmail.com. I also listed my number 806-382-0926 and you can speak with Shamika Williams, which is me. Um, sometimes I am busy because I am, um, a braider. So usually I'm in here braiding, but as long as I can do what I'm doing and it doesn't cut into my time, um, I have no problem talking to you, um, and helping you out any way that I can. Don't, some of you guys like, you're going to be nervous. You're going to question yourself. Like you're going to have doubts. Those are all normal feelings um, until you get started. You, you're, it's just normal to question yourself um, if you can make it happen, um, how you're going to make it happen, can you do this. It is good to have a partner, family that are really involved. Sometimes it could be a bad thing, but um, it could definitely be a good thing. Me doing hair, I have... I have three boys and a girl, so my daughter's 10, my oldest is 22. Um, the boys definitely aren't into hair and things, you know, they have their own agenda. So, you know, it's not a big deal for me that um, they're not just involved. My daughter does come and help when she can to help run the register, help stock items and things like that. So I definitely do teach her just because in the long run, I do want her to know, like, you don't have to work for people you can work for yourself even though it's nothing wrong with working for someone um but it also helps to have family and things come in and help you because once you're starting out you're not able to pay somebody a regular check like a franchise building would be able to so it helps to have friends or family that understand that when they're coming in you know they're either going to be doing volunteer work or you know i can pay you this here and i can pay you this there until i build up to get to where i need to be um, when I originally opened my first store, I opened with $10,000. $10,000 is what I had. I opened with my income tax. Um, it's income tax season. You guys are getting your taxes. Um, you're getting stimuluses. This is a good time to take that money and invest it in something that's definitely going to give back. Um, during the pandemic, a lot of things, there were a lot of businesses that shut down, whether they be small businesses or franchises and things like that. Um, but one thing that has continued to keep going is the beauty supply industry. Um, it just, it just never slowed down. People are going to need those wigs. They're going to need that hair, um, makeup, whatever accessories that they need. They're going to need that. You're dealing with people with alopecia, just people who, um, don't like to comb their hair, what have you. Um, so the money's still been good in the beauty supply industry. Uh, it's definitely a place where you can grow. So don't hesitate. You're going to be nervous. Trust me, it's going to be frustrating. These are all normal feelings. I mean, because it's taking work. Um, it's going to take your work. Nobody's basically going to do the work for you. So it's going to take, um, it's just going to take a lot out of you. But when you get to the final outcome of what you've put your heart, uh, sweat and tears in, you're going to be happy, you know, um, you just have to do it. You have to give it a go. It It's okay to start small and go big than to go big and um, fall off and go small. So don't be afraid to... If you have $5,000, trust me, you can make it work with $5,000. Don't be intimidated by when you go into these big beauty supply stores or somebody that, that's doing it bigger than what you're able to do. Don't get intimidated that you know you won't stand out because you will there are a lot of people that i have that come yeah we have a couple of beauty supply stores here 
but I do just as good. I might not do the money that they do, but I do money. Um, people come through my door just because some people only want to support black owned businesses. Some people only want to support small businesses. So don't ever feel intimidated. I get, um, what would be the word? Um, when I go into places like that, I look forward to hoping that's where I'm going to be because that is where I'm going to get. I'm going to get there. And the same thing goes for you. When you go into those places, don't feel defeated, intimidated or nothing. Just think about, you know, one day, okay, look where I started. Three years down the road, five years down the road, look what I have now. I've built business accounts with these big vendors and things like that. Um, you're able to get more product, more colors. Um, because when you're dealing with the smaller vendors and things, yeah, you can get plenty of things to get started but sometimes you're not let's say you go and get a wig and this is braided wig and things like that and you got people who like the blacks and burgundies you got people who love the blondes the honey blondes and things like that sometimes you may not always be able to get those colors you know so even though they're good you still want to keep pushing so you can get to these big vendors because once you get you a rep from those big vendors they're going to message you um, and when they message you, they're going to let you know what's coming out new. Um, here's your wholesale price. Um, how many you need to buy of this and that. And you're able to get um, first dibs on all the colors, all the options and things like that. So, and that's kind of where I've gotten now. I've gotten three big, um, big vendors. I got my three big vendors um, the last two weeks. And I've been blessed. You know, I'm very excited with the expansion of my store just because I know what I have coming. Um, I have let some of my customers know, but they really don't know what's really coming, you know. So I've been really excited about that. I'm sorry, guys. I have another call, but I think I'm going to let it ring through because my last video I had to restart over. But you guys, um, I want to go over the steps again. Find you a building. Don't just find any building. Find you a building that you can afford. A building that even if even if it were to be slow, because you're going to have your slow, slow months. And it's not even going to be a full month of being slow, but it could possibly be, you know. So you want to, to know that you'll be able to afford your rent if something comes up. You know, if you had to dig in pocket, um, and your building isn't paying for itself. I mean, it, it, it happens. So don't really just go outside of your means. Um, find a building. Go to the Texas comptroller. I'm sorry, guys. I keep saying Texas. Go to the comptroller of your state. Fill out resale permit. Do a EIN and it doesn't matter which order you do the comptroller and the EIN. You can do the EIN number and then do the comptroller. It doesn't matter as far as those two. And then you would want to go to the SBA of your state in your city um, and fill out, get it notarized for your business. Take that paperwork from there and go to the Secretary of State in your city. And you're going to do your DBA, which is your assumed name. You doing business as whatever you choose to have your business. And you're ready to go. You're ready to start um, furnishing your building. Same thing for like your website. Um, I'm not for sure all of the steps of a website. But as far as... You're still going to have to do the steps of going to the comptroller because you're going to want to buy wholesale. You're still going to go to the SBA because your business is still going to have a name. You will go to the Secretary of State because you're going to register your name, uh, your business as a DBA. And I would assume that it would be the same if you were selling from home. But... And uh, let me expand on that also. When you're doing business from home or a website, the big vendors, at this point, they do not let you open a contract with them. I don't know the reason why. 
but they don't. They don't do business with online or e-commerce. Um, and somehow they will check in their system when you do, um, when you contact them about opening a contract. They will look at your location to see, they're going to like Google and whatever else they do. I don't know what all they, um, they do on their end, but they will check to see if you are a brick and mortar building. When you do, um, before, when you're doing the application, part of the application process through them will be to take a picture of the inside of your building and the outside to show them that you do have a brick and mortar building. Um, so keep that in mind also, but through the small vendors and stuff like that, they don't ask for all the information that the bigger vendors do. Um, let's see what else, guys. And then let's just expand on, let's say you only have 5000 to get going. Let's see, let's say you got your building and you had $5,000. Let me just help you in a way to help delegate your money on what's what you can sell um without sitting on the product for so long things that will sell would be braiding hair good braiding hair easy braid which will be the innocence brand um outre Ruwa. these are very good brands of hair um and you would want to stick with the shorter lengths 18 inches to 20 26 inches just getting started um wigs wigs are gonna be some of your top sellers very nice wigs nowadays i'm starting to notice that a lot of the younger ones love wigs with the baby hair um definitely lace fronts but you also have people who do not like lace at all they don't know how to cut it they don't know how to wear it it breaks them out and things like that so just options of wigs um edge controls when you get edge controls don't just get one edge control get an option but one of the big um edge controls that i do sell here would be the ebon or even however you pronounce it is one of the big sellers it is good um, and you're able to sell it at a cheaper price than some of the other ones. Um, but you do want to get options of edge controls. Let's see what else. I do sell wild growth oil like crazy. Magic fingers. For braiders, um, this is like a staple in the community now, um, which is Shining Jam. Magic fingers will be in the red jar. Uh, shining jam in the yellow jar these are really big sellers these are things that you will not sit on let's see what else um olive oil products wax sticks of course shampoos and conditioners if you have a good brand um greases let's see what else eco style gel things like that um hair product will sell but i mean as you're selling product and purchasing more you will continue to add on you know um but you will want to have some of the top things hair bows barrettes beads things like that those are things that you can get for pretty cheap um and sell for a dollar and sell plenty of them you know Crochets um, sell really good. Lulu Tress is um, a, a top brand. Uh, Bobby Boss. Um, people are into the locks now. Um, faux locks. Uh, passion twist. Kinky uh, twist. Spring twist. Um, these are some of the number one sellers that I see in my community. Where are you from? Where you're from, it might be a little bit different, but I know as far as braiding hair and wigs and things like that, um, those are going to be number one sellers across the board, no matter where you're at. Uh, bundles. Bundles can get a little bit more expensive, uh, but you do have uh, people who do buy the bundles 
and they want the closures either because they're missing hair and then some just because some people don't want to keep putting uh, heat on the leave out and eyelashes guys eyelashes I I don't know why I forgot eyelashes but eyelashes um, are definitely another top seller um, even if you just stocked up on eyelashes eyelashes can be a business all on its own because once you start wearing them I mean when you don't have them on it looks like something's missing from your face uh, eyelashes are a number one seller let's see what else trying to look around and see hair glue um, lace front glue even if you just start out with a little bit you know so if you had to delegate that money I would take I would take about five to six hundred dollars and buy braiding hair just to get started this is just to get started guys I would take about 1500 to 2000 and just spend all, only on wigs um, I would take another 500 just to get started on hair product and so let's say we're at about 2500 you still got 2500 to delegate you could take about I would say 200 250 just to get started on hair bows and beads um, you could take another let's say thousand just to get crochets um, take that other thousand and get you some bundles some human hair just to get started guys you're gonna see your money come I'm sorry I have somebody outside I got my door locked But yeah, guys, um, and I guess I'll end this video. You guys have a good day.